Technology is moving forward rapidly, and this progress constantly changes the world around us in unexpected ways. It is only natural that we will try to predict the technology of the future and how it will change the world. So, is it possible to predict scientific progress? And more importantly, is it possible to avoid the dangers of unknown technologies? In order to answer this question, we will look at how H.G. Wells predicted the atomic bomb in 1913, 32 years before the first one exploded. We will see where he was right and wrong and see if we can apply the same principles to predict our own future. I think that it is indisputable that technological progress has been the defining characteristic of our civilizations for the past 200 years. One single technology has the capacity to fundamentally change our lives, and so far we have only been able to see the real consequences of a technology from hindsight. When the contraceptive pill was invented, nobody expected that this would be one of the main drivers of the sexual revolution and would fundamentally change the way that we think about sex and family. After all, what can a little pill do? This leads us to the conclusion that it will be almost impossible to fully understand the implications for society caused by the unstoppable march of technological progress. In a very real sense, we are blind to the future consequences of the technology that we invent today. So it is only natural that we will want to know what will happen in the future and how it will be different from our present reality. However, the problem is that we cannot use the scientific method to predict what will happen. We have no data to work with, and nothing in our past can be used to understand the impact of something like AI or nuclear weapons. They are completely revolutionary. So the only thing that we have left is our own fantasy to try to speculate what the consequences of progress will be. The fact that H.G. Wells predicted the atom bomb is the perfect example of how strange our situation is. In the age of science, our only vision into the consequences of our own scientific progress is not science itself, but instead it is the fantasy of a science fiction writer. Wells wrote The World Set Free in 1913, one year before World War I and 32 years before the Manhattan Project finally reached their goal in the New Mexico desert. In 1896, radiation was first discovered by Becquerel, and in 1898, the first radioactive elements were also discovered, and their emissions were studied. Wells was inspired to write this novel after reading a paper by Frederick Soddy, which notes that uranium emits a constant low level of energy through radiation that lasts for thousands of years. This meant that there were great amounts of energy inside radioactive materials. The plot of the novel revolves around a gigantic war where atomic bombs first came into use. Wells imagined that these atom bombs were the size of grenades and not more powerful than regular explosives, but they produced a constant explosion that had a half-life of 17 days. As a result of this terrible war, Mankind decided that if it remained divided, it would inevitably destroy itself and that the only way to avoid collapse would be the creation of a world state that made any further war impossible. If we compare Wells' predictions to the real world, we see that they are wrong on technical aspects, but they are correct on their implications. He recognized that humans had a tendency to use energy sources, like gunpowder, for military purposes, and that radioactivity would be no different. However, radioactivity was different because it gave humans the capacity to destroy humanity itself. However, science progressed, and the technology needed to make a nuclear weapon was developed without thinking about how this would change the world. Ironically, Reading The World Set Free gave the idea of developing the atom bomb to Leos Lizard, one of the future leading members of the Manhattan Project. But until the actual development of nuclear weapons, the most thought out account of the consequences of nuclear weapons would be a silly science fiction book. 
However, this idea had very real consequences. 27th of October of 1962. A Russian submarine is being depth charged. The political officer, the captain, and the executive officer are in an argument. This argument is about the decision to launch their nuclear weapons. The captain and the political officer favor the use of nuclear weapons. The executive officer, a man by the name of Vasily Arkhipov, disagrees. And that day, the decision of one man avoided a nuclear war. Wells correctly predicted what a nuclear war would mean. And the only reason that Wells' vision of a devastating nuclear war did not happen was by pure luck. This leads us to the question, if we lived in 1913, what could we say about nuclear weapons? Could we have known what their consequences would be? Could we prepare ourselves? I think the answer is no. If we lived in 1913, we could just speculate what nuclear weapons would mean in a distant future. We would remain ignorant until the first bomb exploded. Then it would be too late to go back. That leaves us to the conclusion that even in hindsight, humanity was powerless to do anything about the development of nuclear weapons. And we can generalize that there are five stages to the understanding of any future technology. First, we would have complete ignorance of this technology, the world before the discovery of radiation. Second, we would begin to understand this technology we can begin to speculate about future possibilities. H.G. Wells writes a science fiction book about nuclear weapons. Third, the technology develops until it becomes a possibility. The Manhattan Project begins. Fourth, the technology becomes a reality, but its consequences are unknown. First detonation in the New Mexico desert. Five, we understand the implications of the technology from hindsight, and we can make ethical judgments about it. The Cold War ends without a nuclear exchange. Let's imagine that the Cuban Missile Crisis ended in a nuclear war. We would have a timeline that would begin in 1896 with the discovery of radiation, and it would end in 1962 with a world consumed by nuclear fire. At what point would it be possible to stop this process? When H.G. Wells was writing, his ideas about nuclear weapons were not taken seriously, in the same way that the Terminator was not taken as a serious warning against AI. When nuclear weapons became a distinct possibility, a nuclear arms race started to be the first nation to have nuclear weapons because this would mean an incredible advantage over its rivals. Once the major powers have nuclear stockpiles, the use of nuclear weapons is just a matter of luck and time. This leaves us with a conclusion that there was no way to prevent the development of nuclear weapons, and it has a very simple explanation. If a technology does not yet exist, it is impossible to see the advantages and the dangers of this technology. Only after the existence and widespread use of this technology is it possible to see the consequences of its use. But by that point, it is too late to stop it all. And by no means is this only the case with nuclear weapons or AI. Let's take the example of heroin. It was developed in 1897 as a painkiller and was sold as a non-addictive substitute to morphine. I think that in hindsight, we can say that heroin was an incredibly stupid idea. However, it is impossible to go back. We cannot eliminate the idea of heroin. Once something is invented, it is impossible to de-invent it. Heroin is here to stay. How can a blind person tell that a knife is sharp without cutting themselves? Anyone that has been around someone who is blind will realize how important touch is to them. That is the way that they experience the world. However, by the time that our hypothetical blind person figures out that the knife is sharp, 
he will already have cut himself. And it is only after the cut that he will know that it is sharp. Science operates in a very similar way. The progress of science has moved our society forward. However, we can only tell that something is dangerous after we have invented it. And that is the great tragedy of science. It is a beautiful process that has moved our civilization forward like nothing else. But at the same time, it has brought the greatest dangers that mankind has ever faced. The tragedy lies that so far, we have not been able to separate good scientific progress from bad scientific progress. We have not been able to separate chemistry from mustard gas. Will we be able to separate the benefits of AI from the dangers? Our civilization, more than any other, is bound to scientific progress. We cannot stop this progress without dictatorial measures. Even if we manage to stop scientific progress in time, we would be conquered by another civilization that has developed their technology beyond ours. Science is blind. However, it continues its march forward, and we are chained to it. I do not know what the technologies of the future will bring. The only thing that I can do is speculate and realize that my speculations mean nothing.